Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on resolving malware issues. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at the requirements from our CompTIA a 220-702. That's our practical application exam. And in section 4.1, we go through the very beginning to the very end of managing somebody who has gotten malware on their machine, identifying what's really going on, solving the problem, clearing out anything that might be left over, and then educating the user about how they could avoid these things in the future. If you've ever gotten malware on a computer, then you've probably seen the symptoms up close of really what's going on. Your computer might start acting very, very slow. You might be getting a lot of different pop-up windows when you go into a browser, things that didn't used to happen whenever you were using your browser. Or you these days, it's a very, very complex and very involved fake warning system. This, for instance, is malware that's called PC Anti-Spyware 2010. Sounds very, very official. This, although it looks like this is something that is a legitimate anti-spyware piece of software, this in itself actually is spyware. And in many cases, not only does it tell you that your machine is infected and that you don't have spyware protection and that you don't have privacy protection or general security, even though you might already be running those things, you'll notice that the, there's also places on here where you can get real-time protection. You actually can buy this spyware. You give the bad guys your credit card number and you purchase the stuff that's going to go on your machine that actually is not solving any of your spyware problems. That is a very, very advanced piece of spyware. And it's one that you have to keep up with and you have to watch for because this looks absolutely legitimate. This looks probably better than some of the anti-spyware software that's actually available on the market. So sometimes this malware comes in and it's not something that we would expect. It actually comes in this way and is able to, to take advantage of people who don't know any better. Well, that's a little bit of a problem. So if we have somebody who's having these slowdowns or pop-up messages or they may be infected with something like PC Anti-Spyware 2010, then we need to start the process for getting rid of this off of their system. When we identify that somebody has spyware on the system, one of the first things that we should do is to quarantine the system. Make sure that it does not connect to anyone else. And obviously, one of the easiest ways to connect to people is over the network. That's how we're getting all of this spyware and this malware these days. Get it completely disconnected and contained from anyone else that might be out there. We don't want this spyware hopping over to another person's machine or having someone else connect to a share that's already infected on our device and then infecting themselves. We should also make sure that all removable media is isolated. Make sure that all of the external hard drives, if somebody has a a memory key that they use, a USB attached memory stick, you may want to quarantine those things as well because that spyware loves to, to hide on those where it can then be plugged into someone else's machine and immediately leap over to their device. And usually that happens through a mechanism called auto run. Windows has a capability that will automatically run whatever you plug in through some of those USB connections. On some versions of Windows, that auto run feature is turned on by default. On some versions of Windows, it's turned off by default. So you don't know when you're plugging in exactly what you're getting into. One good rule of thumb is to hold down the shift key whenever you plug in that device or you put in that CD. Uh, that way it will not run or auto run. You can also go into your control panel, this is in Vista, and choose the auto play options for these different devices. And you can tell the operating system never auto run for these particular types of commit connections or maybe always, or at least give you an idea. Ask me every time if you happen to see that. I'll make the decision on whether I should be running that code. Because if it's an infected USB stick and I plug it in and it auto runs, that auto run is going to execute that spyware and that malware is now going to be on my machine. Another thing to keep in mind is we don't want this to spread. That's the whole process of quarantining this system. Don't transfer any files to anybody. Don't try to back up your system or recover from a backup that you just did to this infected system. That, it's too late for that. That ship has already sailed. Your system's now infected. If there's a backup that is you've done before your system was infected, that backup now becomes very, very important for you because there may be situations where you can't guarantee that the data files on this computer are not going to be infected or damaged in some way. Malware can do anything to a system. So it may be the case that we just can't recover from this, or it may be the case that we can, but in any 
in any extent, we don't want to have a case where we're infecting the system, we've cleaned it up, we're reinfecting it with our old software again. Try to avoid that at all costs. We'll keep this quarantined until we know we've got a good system. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of different types of malware out there, and you need to try to find out more about what you're seeing. In fact, you'll see messages. You may see something called the AV Security Suite. Here's another fake piece of malware that says you're infected with all of these bad things when, in fact, you're not. And they even give you a message down here that says an application can't be executed. The WordPad EXE is infected. Do you want to activate your antivirus software now and really start infecting your machine? That's exactly the problem we run into. So maybe we'll go to Google and see if we can figure out more about the AV Security Suite, innovative protection for your PC indeed. Uh, maybe also go to the malware companies, the big ones like the Symantec's and the McAfee's and the Trends. They keep some very, very nice libraries of these things, and their websites can be a wealth of information. And lastly, we want to scan the system. We want to take multiple scanners and scan this to see what else we can find that might be on this computer. If there's one piece of malware on here, it's very possible that one piece of malware came with a bunch of others as well. So we want to be sure that we're not focusing our efforts on one thing, that we're really looking at the entire system. Once we've got an idea of where the problems are, we want to get rid of this. We need to remediate the system, get it back to where it was before it was infected. One of the main companies, I mentioned Symantec and McAfee and Trend, those companies have uh, all-in-one systems that not only will remove viruses, but also malware. They'll check the boot CD and make sure that nothing in the master boot record is infected. They really do an all-in-one check with those things. They're tried and true systems. There are some other options out there. For instance, a very good anti-malware piece of software is one from Malwarebytes. And their anti-malware is very, very good at finding malware. Many times you run many different ones of these. Run, run Symantec and McAfee and Trend and Malwarebytes. You may find that one piece of software finds certain pieces of malware that others don't. So most security professionals that are in this particular field know that they're going to run multiple engines through their system just to make sure that they're really clean, that, that we've really checked every possible signature we can get our hands on using everybody's engine. There's really... By the way, no way to tell that it's really gone. We're going to use malware bytes and we'll find something that's in the registry and we'll click the button to remove it. But the reality is that the malware may be something that's new. There may not be a signature for this malware. None of these manufacturers may have found that piece of malware. So the only way to really be sure that we've eradicated it is to completely delete this machine, reinstall the operating system. In very large enterprises, that's a very common thing. If machines infected with malware, it's completely wiped and they'll re-image the system. And they've got systems set up where that only takes a few minutes to have that happen. Of course, there's some things that have to be recovered after you do that. You have to get your data files back or figure out how to connect to the network again and get things set up for that user. But in, ultimately, that's the only real way that you're going to know that you got rid of everything is to start from scratch again. You should certainly have antivirus and anti-malware software on your computer, and you should always make sure that it's updated. From that software, the engine itself is an important aspect of that. That main engine is the thing that's doing the hard work. It's doing the scanning. It's checking the master boot record. It's, it's trying to find the things that are bad on your system. And the engine is very important, but generally it's not updated a lot. Usually that's something that's only updated in major chunks, maybe once every month or once every two months. The things that are updated all the time are the signature updates. Those signature updates are incredibly important. They're, they're always updated. There's constant changes because there's always new malware. There's always new antivirus. There's many, many new viruses that come out every day. And so you have to have the latest version of those signatures to make sure that you're eradicating everything that's known out there and that engine can really do its job. There's a couple ways to do this. There is a manual process. If you wanted to right then decide to get the latest signature set or to check and make sure you had the latest signature set, you could press a button on your antivirus software and it will manually go out and check that. Almost everybody's antivirus software, though, is set up by default 
to go out and check automatically at least once a day so that it's going out to that remote location, pulling back the latest set of signatures and making sure that you have the latest set of known problems that you might possibly run into out there. It's a constant race to make sure that you always are one step ahead of the bad guys. So you want to be sure whenever you're sitting down and looking at an antivirus or anti-malware on somebody's machine that they're running the latest engine and the latest signatures. Viruses can hide in your data files and your executable files and on the master boot record of your computer. The MBR isn't something we normally will access, though, in our operating system. It, the master boot record starts up whenever we start our operating system, and then we really don't touch it. So the only reliable way to remove a virus from the master boot record is to really re replace the entire master boot record. Because some of these viruses get in, encrypt themselves, change pieces of it, it's not really easy to repair the master boot record. One way to help fix the MBR is to run things like fdisk slash MBR, which will rewrite the master boot record on your computer. You might also want to do things like run the sys command. If I do that to my C drive, for instance, it replaces the core system files that are used when my computer starts up. So that's a couple of ways you can go about doing it. Most people will use the antivirus software that comes with their system. Most of today's antivirus software and anti-malware software does a fine job at making sure it can recover the master boot record so that you don't have to go through those command line features to have that happen. You may run into an occasion where the virus or the malware can't be removed when the system is running. So one of the things that you might want to try is to boot up into a safe mode where you're really running just the minimal operating system. Perhaps all of your drivers aren't loading. You're not connecting and running any network communication. This can prevent some of those malware pieces from starting up to begin with, and that may give you the opportunity to remove them from your computer. If that doesn't work, you may have to use something like a boot CD or an external environment, maybe the recovery console, to be able to run some of these things. A really good example of a bootable CD that I like is called Bart's Pre-Installed Environment, which is a bootable live Windows DVD. And you can find that at www.nu2.nu slash pebuilder. And you can build your own bootable Windows CD DVD. And because you're running Windows, you can access NTFS drives. You can run Windows executables. It's a really nice working environment. There's also a number of live CDs that you can find running Linux and other operating systems that also have antivirus and anti-malware programs on there that you can use to scan other machines. So always have those in your back pocket. You may run into a situation where those live CDs really come in handy. Once we finally get rid of the virus, we may want to educate our users and let them know that there are certain things they can do to make sure they aren't clicking on attachments inside of email messages, that they don't click on links that go to websites or try to click on links from inside of their emails. So that you may want to put up posters or signs so you have a lot of visibility in your environment and they can see every time they get off the elevator the latest security messages and tips they can use to make sure that their working environment is secure. You might also try email. Not everybody is at a central location anymore. And although it becomes a little more difficult because people don't really read their email a lot, it is a good way to talk to a lot of different people at one time. There's also message boards, the real kind of message boards, and having in the coffee room where people are putting up things for sale, also put some security messages on there. When you're logging into your computer, you've got the option to set the login message there as well. And if you're constantly changing that, maybe putting a message of the day up, that can also get people's attention. Lastly, you probably have an intranet page if you're in a large organization. And having that splash screen come up and have notices on there can also give people an idea of how they can keep their environment just a little bit safer. Let's review some of our topics from resolving these malware issues. Our first question is, what are signs of malware infections? What are some things that we might expect to see on somebody's workstation if they're infected with malware? Or they're probably going to get slowdowns and pop-ups and fake virus warnings and a lot of other things that just don't look very normal. The next question is, what is the most important aspect of antivirus signature management? Well, if we've got signatures in our computer and we're running an antivirus software with that, we have to make sure that we are updated to the latest set of signatures. If you're planning to do a scan, perform an update just before doing that scan. You'll know that you then have exactly the latest ones available to you. And the last question, what is the most secure and complete method of removing malware? Well, the most complete and certainly the most successful way to every single time to get rid of malware 
nuke it from orbit. Just delete everything on the computer and completely reinstall the operating system. At the end of the day, that may be the only way you can absolutely ensure that you've cleaned this machine off and there's no malware left on it. That covers our requirements from our 22702 section 4.1. We now have a very good understanding of what we're expecting to see with malware, ways that we can resolve the problems, and ultimately educate our end users so perhaps it won't happen again. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.